Hi, my name is Jessie Tsang and I'm an illustrator from Brooklyn, New York. I do most of my editorial illustrations and my personal work on my trusty iPad that you see here. And I'm here today because I was lucky enough to be commissioned by the Adobe Creative Residency Community Fund to create an illustration in their fresco app. I'm here to show you some tips and a bit of my drawing process, like how I color and use clipping masks and how I use some of the features in fresco. I hope you find these tips helpful in your creative process and let's get started. Here I am going to map out shapes using the vector tool and basic round brush. I start out with a simple outline drawing, but I do spend a bit of time working on this outline because it makes life easier when I have the most important parts of the composition planned out already. I lower the opacity a bit on the sketch and set the layer to multiply. Here I'm going to bring in some existing color palettes I have as PNG files using Adobe Cloud Documents and this makes it really seamless and easy to bring in files or pictures that you have on the cloud and continue your work. I'm using neutral colors to block out the shapes as I'm still focusing on composition and we'll work on the color later. Here I'm using the eyedropper tool to pick up my color and the vector brush tool to draw my shapes. When I need to create straight lines like with this house, I will begin a line and then hold the brush in its place for a second. This action will make the line straighten itself out, then I can drag it into position. When all the lines are connected, I'm going to select the paint bucket tool and fill in the shape, which I find very satisfying. So with this shape layer, I'm going to clip my colors to it, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Another little tip I have here is dragging out the brush size and color tool, then clicking the expand button in the top right corner to minimize the rest of the tools. This allows me a bit more space and breathing room to focus on my drawing and I still have the brush size tool to adjust when I need to. Fast forward a bit here, all of my shapes filled out into separate layers. All of the shapes are then organized into groups like the house, the hat, the jacket, the pants, the plants, and so on. One of the things that I like about Fresco is that there's no layer limit. I work in a lot of layers, as you can see, so it's nice not to have a limitation. But too many layers in one file can also be a bit of a headache. I'm going to separate these layers into two files so that it's easier to manage. In my documents, I'm going to click on the three dots here to duplicate the file. I'm going to keep one of my files with all of the layers as a backup, just in case I need to come back to it for any reason. Here I'm renaming it all separate layers. With the second duplicate file, I'm going to focus on the figure, so I'm renaming this document figure layer. My third duplicate file, I'm going to focus on the plants and the house, so I'm just renaming that accordingly. Now I'm going to open the figure file and flatten the house and plant layers. I'm also going to lower the opacity so I can leave the flattened image of the house and plants as a reference. And this frees up a lot of space for me to focus on coloring the figure. Then I go back into my cloud documents and I am going to do the same thing with my third duplicate file of the house and plant layers except this time I am going to merge the figure layer and flatten that down and lower the opacity, leaving it as a reference as well. And after that, I'm ready to color. So I went back to my outline drawing and made a little palette on the side of my chosen colors. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to pick up the colors and roughly plan out where I want them to go. So here's my planned out color palette, and I'm going to copy and paste this reference into my shape layers and begin coloring. 
My coloring technique is creating a new layer for my color and then clip it to the shape layer underneath by pressing the downward arrow button on the side of the layer panel. Since the color layer is clipped to the shape layer underneath, the colors are going to stay within the pant-like shape. When I unclip my color layer, you can see all the brush strokes are on top of the shape and when I clip it again, you can see that it's within the shape itself. I'm adding the green on another layer and using the wet brush one from the painting set and pixel brushes. You can create some really natural brush strokes by playing around with how you move your pencil and the amount of pressure that you apply. Here I'm painting the other pant leg. Since it's in a separate layer, it makes shading very effortless since the shape is already planned out and that layer is underneath the front leg. Now I can consolidate the layers to free up some space by merging the clipped yellow that's behind the green into the shape layer. This merges the two layers together and replaces the brown color I had when I was planning out my shapes. I'm happy with the way the green color and texture looks, so now I'm going to go back to the shape layer and add some texture to that as well using the pencil brush. I'm using the same color yellow that the shape already is so that the green will stay the same from the clip layer above as I'm editing the shape. Another way I like to edit my drawing is by using a mask. So I click on the layer I want to edit and then I select mask layer contents. Then I can erase freely without any risk because I'm not really erasing but instead hiding parts of my drawings with the mask. I can always switch to reveal on the bottom button and bring back the original parts of the layer. Fast forward, this is what my piece looks like colored using clipping masks and layer masks. I consolidate the layers as much as I can and bring them back into one document as you see here. Okay, I'm almost done and I just want to add some final touches. I'm going to add some shading to the pants using the clipping mask again. And then I just like to move around the clipped layers a little bit to my liking. And here it is, my final illustration, completely done in fresco. Thank you for watching my tutorial. You can find me on the internet at Jessie Zong Art on Instagram and Twitter. I hope you found this helpful and I love to see what you create in fresco, so feel free to reach out with any questions. Bye for now.